So, hello everyone. How's it going? So, I love playing Stellaris, and it's been a while since I've actually played a game, or rather broadcast a game. So, I thought today we could look at a completely randomly generated species. Let's take a little look at this species, then. So, we're a kind of a million. I don't know, they, they kind of look familiar to me. Oh. To Toy Darin. What an interesting name. That sounds great. A bit like that Star Wars chappy, maybe. Maybe not. And let's have a quick look at the traits we're going to go for today. So we're going to go for Resilient, which increases defense army damage by 50%. And we're going to go for Rapid Breeders. We're also going to go for Wasteful, which increases pop consumer goods upkeep. Oh look, Tatooine, that kind of sounds familiar, in the star name of uh, Tato. Oh look, it's a, a binary <laughs> star system, that's, that's kind of interesting. And we're going to go for Mechanist, because I think our planet needs some, some mechs on it. And, as you might expect for a sort of slave empire, we're going to go for Authoritarian. Going to go for Xenophobe. <coughs> And we're also going to go for Materialist because we've got our robots. So they're going to, of course, serve us extra well. Uh, nothing particularly else, I guess. Uh, ships are all kind of quite standard. I don't think I've set this, actually. Look at those reptilian ships. I think we should just go for reptilian because they're kind of mean. Our uh, leader's called Watto. Overlord Watto. Excellent. Let's just jump right in, I guess. So, I'm just saving my ships, basically. I'm going to be playing on Commodore, which isn't one of the hardest settings, but it's kind of quite nice for what we want to do here. Hyperlane densities up. Um, everything else is it's fairly normal. We're on a small galaxy map because, you know, this is a galaxy far, far away, I guess, guys. So, we. We don't really want to spend too much time here. But yeah, everything else looks fairly fairly standard, I guess. AI aggressiveness is quite high. So that's going to sort of create the game we want to play. Okay, let's just uh, let's go seven. Oh, yeah. Let's just jump right in, guys. I'm just going to check everything is good. Yeah, everything looks good. In the eon since the first primitive tour, Darren communities took shape and amid the great June seas of Tatooine, our civilization has spread and prospered. Excellent. Let's jump right in then, I guess. Oh, we're located here. Gosh, this looks bigger than usual. I've been playing on Tiny recently for no particular reason. So, I always like to get research going as quick as possible, guys. Off-world trading company. Sounds like something we might need, and it's good for the engineering. So, so guys, I'm thinking for the traditions, I think I'm going to go supremacy, simply because we want to get out into space and we want to enslave everyone so if we jump into supremacy maybe that'll give our ships a few bonuses and that'll help us um, enslave another nation fairly early on which would be great i'm also thinking that i'm going to increase the number of science ships i've got just so i can explore more quickly so guys you may notice this research involves industry, and our researcher has um, Voidcraft as his specialty. So, what we're going to do, we're going to swap pit him out for this guy, and then that'll free up one of our scientists to actually go and explore in, uh, in an exploration ship, which is good. Geothermal fracking, yeah, let's go for that. And I really need to 
doesn't really matter if you set your exploration craft to explore the same planet because it, it just will literally speed up your exploration which is what we want because we really want to take as much territory as possible so i think our edicts are going to be they're fine let's look at our air policies expansionist see what we have available so outpost build costs reduced by 10 percent colony development speed plus 15 percent that's very good Isolation is quite good, increases your monthly unity, which again can help um, increase the rate at which you can expand. Cooperative, which is good later on. Belligerent, which is kind of good for war. Uh, cooperative, yeah, diplomatic weight increased. Um, so yeah, it just helps you with diplomacy and things. But yeah, I think expansionist is good for now, although Isolationist would be kind of good too. Though, to be honest, there's no one to really isolate from. <laughs> so guys, because I've got slaves, I'm going to build a stronghold. And although it doesn't explicitly say it, it says soldier jobs increase naval capacity and spawn defense armies. Um, and they should also increase stability, I should imagine. So we really want to keep um, stability and crime. Well, we want to keep crime as low as possible and stability as uh, high as possible. So I'll have a little look to see if um, strongholds actually affect this. Also, guys, um, as you may notice, there's another desert world here, which would be perfect for colonizing. So. That's what I'm going to do. So guys, because I'm Imperial, one of the advantages is I can actually have two of these um, edicts. So I could potentially have four or five of order, which would uh, increase star base upgrade speed by 2% and increase the number of star bases by two. Um, I believe we already have a technology which would allow star bases to produce energy. So this can actually be quite a good bonus. So, I'm going to do these a bit later on. At the moment, I'm going to use my influence to expand as quickly as possible. There's also information quarantine, which again, increases stability by 5, and government ethics attraction um, by 50%. So again, this is great, and the extra stability is good on the world with a lot of slaves. So again, both of these are very good, but I'm just going to wait to use them. So guys, I've encountered some uh, aliens up here. They are the uh, half uh, I can't say that. But yeah, the name is Ha. Uh, I'm not going to even bother with that. Uh, I guess we can investigate. Although, to be honest, I'm just going to not bother investigating because they're not hostile, so it doesn't really matter. And you guys may notice, I've got a lot of science ship, but only one construction ship. And that's typically because the construction ship can mostly handle all the work that we're going to give it. So uh, later on, we may give it some more work. But for now, it's, it's kind of okay. But I guess if you wanted to expand more quickly, you know, then you probably used to. But one's all right for now. Ah, right. Okay. So they're an alien empire over there. That's interesting. <laughs> so guys, one of the good things about supremacy is, um, if you look here, it increases fleet command limit by 20 and admiral level cap by two. So supremacy is very good for giving your ships a boost. And if you're fighting um, an enemy that's kind of equivalent to you then well, what person with supremacy is going to have a slight advantage so it's worth taking even early on so I've got a few construction ships now and I really want to take this area as quickly as possible because if the uh, enemy takes this area it's going to block me in and that's going to severely damage my growth potential which is very bad so yeah really want to take this area ASAP Excellent, guys. So we've taken all of Supremacy here. 
and I'm going to pause for game and have a think about what I really want to take. Okay, I think I'm going to be boring and go for technological ascendancy. It gives you a um, bit of a research boost and I don't know, it's one of my favorite things to go for in the beginning of the game. Uh, the other possibilities could be, for example, uh, transcendent learning, um, sort of get the level cap up. Um, actually, the interstellar domain wouldn't be bad. Uh, it would increase or rather decrease the star base influence cost by 20% and claim influence cost by 20%. So that's really good if you want to claim sort of enemy territory and things. Actually, that might be a good one to go for. But I'm just going to get technological ascendancy. So guys, I'm going to sell some minerals and I'm going to get a few more uh, alloys, right? I'm desperately short of alloys and I really need to ramp up production. And I'm also thinking, right, I'm going to need another alloy foundry, like base that really. So let's grab one of them. So guys, let's look at slavery briefly. So the default is uh, chattel slavery, which is, well, chattel slavery is the most common form of slavery in the galaxy. Whether for life or a limited time, unrestricted access to the labor of others is in some parts seen as a privilege with numerous counter duties attached. Um, so anyway, um, you get um, increased resource production, but slaves cannot be employed as rulers or specialists. So um, cattle slavery is probably good for now, I guess. Um, later on, when you've got a larger slave population and you want to make them a bit slightly happier, you can go with domestic servants uh, that are not holding another job um, will be employed as servants increasing amenities they cannot perform ruler or specialist jobs um, so if you have a very very large slave population and a fairly diverse economy and you need a lot more um, amenities then entertainers are brilliant because they'll provide those amenities for you and also this will wipe out any unemployment because any unemployed pops will simply become entertainers. So this is quite powerful. There's also indentured servitude, which allows slaves to be workers or specialists, but they also retain more political power. So those are the three options at the moment. Um, so I'm going to stick with cattle slavery simply because I get more resources. But later on, I'm probably going to go with domestic servitude or, or, or we'll sort of have a think about that later. And you guys might be wondering about robot rebellions. Well, apparently if you ban the um, robot sentience perks, which you kind of get later on, um, then basically there's um, no chance of them revolting because they just don't have the cognitive ability to sort of revolt. So that's what I'm probably going to do this game, even though there's a bit of a penalty, um, but never mind, I guess. So guys, I've got more traditions. I think I'm going to go for expansion this time. It's got some pretty solid bonuses and it's quite good to have this from the sort of near the beginning of the game. So guys, this is um, an interesting development. We have a system here with a primitive civilization so I'm going to take this star system and then invade it. So that'll require an army, which I'm going to build now. It doesn't require much of an army. Usually three or four units will do it perfectly. And these are um, early space age. I really don't want them developing into anything else, which is kind of why I'm going to take them as quickly as possible.
Also, guys, I'm going to funnel more resources into alloys so I can build more ships. Because at the moment, I've got 28 naval capacity, which is pretty good. Hmm. Also, guys, I've just met the creators, and because I'm already kind of going for science, I figured... Okay, so they want a thousand energy, which is very reasonable for a small boost. So here we go. That's um, a small research boost from them. And they are located down here in Hell's Moor. Guys, I know you can buy missiles and gun batteries and things, but typically I always go for an anchorage and a trade hub, or maybe two trade hubs and two anchorages. That's simply because the utility these buildings provide, in my opinion, far outweighs the sort of defensive bonus you get from these. But that's just me. Okay, guys, we're invading the planet. Let's have a little looky. Have we already... Oh, crumbs. Yeah, we're going to lose this. That was really bad. I should have really checked their um, armies before I tried to invade. I'm going to need a few more ships, I think. Quick tip, guys. If you want faster soldier production, simply build soldiers on multiple planets. That way, if you're using three planets, for example, you get three times the production. Guys, if you remember, we researched the Offworld Trading Company at the beginning of the game, and building these on every world where you've got um, trade um, is brilliant. It increases the trade value by two on every single um, trade hub you have. So again, that's a really good way of um, balancing your energy credits. So again, guys, let's try the invasion. One more time. Remember, we're still going to have the advantage because we're um, space age and they're sort of early space age, so... Awesome. We're going to recycle this army, hopefully fairly soon. Great. So we need amenities and employment for the workers. Uh, Build robot facilities, mineral purification plant. Um, okay, guys, we've got large amounts of unemployed here. We've also got very few um, administration type people, so... I'm going to do a bit of a swap C. Um, Yeah, we're going to need some uh, leadership. Our slaves can become the new masters. Excellent. And I don't want, like, these slaves on my nice worlds, but I'm going to increase the population here with a few um, alien slaves. Excellent. Of course, remember guys, um, this is uh, tropical, right? So the species is going to be tropical, so that means there's going to be um, a bit of a problem with some of the slaves. They're going to be slightly less productive because um, they have a uh, tropical preference. But it's not going to be the worst thing in the world, I don't think. More so because we've got a lot of slaves, gonna change them to uh, domestic servitude. Excellent. So, if there is any unemployment, that should uh, be minimized. See what I mean? We've now got a, like slaves and they are producing uh, how? Amenities, yeah, so they're basically producing amenities and they're taking up housing, so um, yeah, the amenities is really high now, which is good, which gives um, plus 20% happiness to the planet, which is very nice. 
also will help with um, unemployment on the other planets. So you know, I'm gonna take some of these nice, nice slaves and put them on my main world, I think. They're just gonna sort of, um, Excellent, so we've got some servants on our on our home world now. Very nice. And also you notice that we now have a um, building slot available, which is good. Because oh my gosh. We're low on um, energy and we're low on consumer goods. And also our Empire Sprawl. Anyway, these are gonna be uh, civilian industries. Some um, build some generator districts too. Remember, guys, really good tip is don't build too many uh, districts if you don't have a population to work. Every district will cost you um, maintenance, so. Um, for example, an agricultural district will cost you uh, one energy per turn, and if you don't have the um, farmer jobs, then you know you're basically paying out money for nothing. So that's one of the mistakes that I was making when I was quite new to the game. So, guys, um looking at my edicts now so i've got four or five border which would give me two extra star bases and quicker upgrade speed which again would be pretty good um information quarantine stability stability is good because it might have a bit of an impact on the economy a positive one and mining subsidies again um it's going to cost um more energy which is kind of bad but it means that mining output is going to be increased so at the moment, I really don't want to do the mining um, just because of the energy output increase. So I'm going to do four fiber border and information quarantine. And as you can see, I've still got 362 influence left. So again, that means I'm hopefully going to have some more star bases, which means more energy, which means more balanced economy, which is kind of good. And You may notice there's a massive um, enemy here. Again, one of the things these enemies have in common is there is only one um, sector that they um, have a planet on, which means I only need to destroy one sector to destroy the enemy, which I'm gonna do shortly, fingers crossed. Of course, if I fail, then I'm kind of doomed. However, there is also um, a possibility, oh. These guys have allied with someone else, which is really bad. So again, I don't know who um, that is yet, but I still might do a really quick raid on them. Um, I don't know, I really need to get that bloody army up though. At the moment, I'm researching Starhold, so fingers crossed, when I've got Starhold that will increase my defensive ability. So guys, um, even though I'm kind of equivalent, um, I've got all my forces kind of together and I think I'm going to try attacking the enemy. I know they've got an ally, but I just want to wipe them out as quickly as possible, really. So we're going to sort of do a real quick attack on these guys. So. I've paused it. We're going to make a claim on the home world and on this world. Um, and I'm just literally going to try to go in here, take this area as quick as possible. Um, he doesn't have any other planets, so the entire empire should kind of dissolve um, if I take this area. Just... Anyway, um, so I'm going to make the claim and I'm going to declare war. This is probably really stupid, but I'm just going to, like I say, roll the dice. Fingers crossed. Again, started and stopping. The enemy's now hostile. I'm taking the, I'm pressing control, setting the hotkey to one. Um, 
I think I've literally put all the resources I can into um, more ship production. Um, so I think that's all I can do. I mean, I can get one more destroyer. Uh, anyway, let's move in and... No. Fingers crossed. Okay, this is 1.3. My fleet is 1.7. And that's um, their defensive ability. Um, so I should, in theory, win this. Of course, there's the obvious problem this is going to damage my ships, which is going to kind of um, harm. So, okay. Let's go and um, just to sort this world here. Um, like I say, really quick kind of blitzkrieg in and out. Um, just want to, you know, destroy this planet as quickly as possible. Now, bear in mind, guys, I have no doubt that the enemy has some uh, fleets, but the fleets aren't in the um, home world, or they're not in the home galaxy, I guess. So I really want to um, invade as quickly as possible. Again, I'm looking at this, and I'm thinking they're... Um, we'll see after the battle, I guess. Right. So 403 is the enemy defense... Um, there's only 83 garrison strength here, so I'm going to land the armies, and I thought I already had a general, but I guess not. Assign a general. Let's do this as swiftly as possible. Uh, yes, I could bombard the planet if I wanted to, but my army's big enough I can just take this. And as you can see, um, the enemy's attacking my uh, galaxies out here, but I don't really care about that. But I tell you what I kind of do care about. Um, if I can take a make a claim here, might be able to capture this area before the enemy is destroyed. Have a little look at the ground combat. Oh, looks like I've taken the planet. Which is a good thing, but I'll tell you what isn't a good thing is there's um, enemies who are going to be attacking me and I've got no idea where they're coming from. Even so, what I'm going to have to do now, guys, is I'm going to have to take enough of the enemy that we uh, they agree to settle status quo. I will then take their planet, and that will be the end of them. However, there are these guys, and I've got no idea where they're located. Oh. Oh. It's their symbol is like bull's horns. Ah, uh, so those are bloody miles away. Actually, they might not be able to um, help because look, you've got all of this kind of blocking them. That's actually not a bad situation. Unless these are like ancient guardian people. No, no, they're not. Oh, 
<sighs> also, guys, I've got science ship down here. I suppose I can make them explore more. But I really want to get a science ship on to the uh, enemy homeworld. Okay, so there is actually one on my home world, but I'm going to send it to there to do some research. Empire Spall is becoming a problem because that's going to really affect my research rate. So, I think I'm going to make another bureaucracy. Uh, So I'm going to funnel some minerals into the auto build queue. I'm going to build a few more robot factories, you know. I'm really impatient with resources, I know, guys. Or, let's have a look at the population then. Quite a few slaves. Tell you what, I'm going to go with a slave processing facility, I think. Alright, guys, what's happening is the enemy have ships that are kind of invading my mid rift section here, which is um, damaging my energy credits. Which is kind of annoying. So I'm gonna go take that, um, take the area back, I think. So guys, um, now attacking the um, main enemy force. Fingers crossed we actually win the battle. Yeah, we're winning. We have the uh, superior firepower, so. Also, bear in mind, I believe um, transport fleets and the like actually are a bit of a distraction for the enemy, so we're actually worth having a new sort of main army. So guys, I noticed that uh, now I'm able to make peace with the enemy here and as you can see I believe I've taken their only world so that means um, when we make peace their empire is going to vanish so I'm literally I've spent all my influence on um, claiming more sect systems so I think I'm just going to make peace right now and just see what happens. Awesome. Let's go. Woohoo! So we made peace and as you can see, <laughs> they've just vanished, which means I've got a huge amount of room to expand. Um, these will be um, the allies of the other people and as you can see, their economy is rubbish. Also, I've got my um, eyes set on these, but their research is superior. Um, they're also hive mind, and hive mind are pretty powerful, actually, um, especially in terms of research. So they want to make a non-aggression pact with me, but if I'm honest, I'm I'm kind of a bit worried about doing that because they're just going to grow in strength, and I mean, I guess I will too, but don't really want to make an aggression non-aggression pact right now, anyway. So, um. Look, I can declare war. They're not all allied with anyone. So I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to ramp up my science production and I'm going to ramp up my economy as much as I can and attack the collective, the ADEX collective. So 
So, okay guys, this is my newly conquered world. And as you can see, there's a lot of unemployed workers. So, again, I'm going to... Uh... No, where's my new species? Oh, here we go, here's my new species. Because they fought so brilliantly in combat, I think I'm going to... I could actually turn them into residents, but I kind of want them as slaves for the moment, I guess. Again, um, long term, you can turn them into residents if you want to. Um, one of the advantages is if you get too many slaves, you can get problems later on. So you can turn pops into uh, residents and they'll be reasonably happy in the Empire. Again, I'm going to upgrade um, my slaves to decent conditions. Might increase the um, output a little bit. So guys, I'm thinking I might try indentured servitude. Um, so as I said previously, enable slaves to work as workers and specialists, um, but they've got more political power. So again, let's um, have a little go with that. And I'm gonna really need to ramp up my consumer goods now because I've improved living conditions. So anyway, um, as you guys could see, I had massive unemployment on the, on the planet I just took, but Let's have a little look. Okay, so the unemployment's down to two. So that's really good, actually, guys. Two without doing anything. So, as you can see, my slaves can basically do any job now. So that's kind of good. And I don't think they're too unhappy, if I'm honest. It's not bad, you know. So crime's a problem. So I don't want moat harvesting. I think I'm gonna go for a slave. Slave political power is reduced and their um, output is increased. So that'd be interesting, especially with um, the slaves being workers and whatnot, and uh, specialists even. I'm just going to put that as top priority. Okay, we'll sort of see what happens with that. Again, if you see any crystal technology or moat technology, I'd grab it as fast as I can. These technologies um, have kind of been assimilated from the previous empire. Robo modding is very good too. In fact, I'm going to go with robo modding. I've got quite a lot of robots, so. Modding them isn't going to be a bad thing, especially for the economy. Excellent, and we've unlocked another Ascension perk, which is kind of cool. Ah, right. So, the second one's always tricky. Um, Mastery in Asia is good because it increases the number of districts on a planet, but again, it's quite costly. Um, and there's quite a lot of micromanagement involved. Um, the raiding is quite good, but I've got really enough slaves, I think, on my planet, so... Uh, I mean, I suppose Mastery in Asia might be good. Simply because I haven't researched many of the blockers yet, so 33% um, increased research on blockers will mean there's more research for other stuff. Um, hmm. Yeah, darn it, I'm going to go with Mastery of Nature. Which is kind of cool. Uh, okay, let's concentrate on the economy then, right. So we need one more star base. Which I think should be down here somewhere. So that's quite um, a central location. 
Um, excellent, so that's upgrading. So let's get these other ones upgraded. Which will actually enable us to make more money, which is always nice. Again, our economy is actually doing really good under the slavery and everything. So, again, I'm going to put more um, resources into alloys. Wow, that's a lot. Let's get all of these upgraded, Ben. Again, I'm just going to swap these over to trade hubs. So guys, I'm pretty desperate for more research. Um, so I'm just going to go through, build a few more research labs. Again, I think I'm going to set my robots to domestic servitude, which um, again, well, if there's any unemployment of the robots, they'll all just become servants, which will make everyone happier. Um, apart from the robots, the robots can't experience happiness. <laughs> um, and then I'm going to go to create template and I'm going to have a little think. So guys, I'm going to upgrade my robot with efficient processors. Increases basic resources, very good. And mass produced, so we're going to be mass produced, obviously, a great 15% speed. But the Empire Sprawl is going to be increased by 10%. So that's kind of okay, I guess. And the upgrade shouldn't take too long. I'm also going to try to get more robots on, well, on every world, ideally. Oh, okay, guys, I didn't read why, but the world exploded for some reason. Of our enemy. <laughs> That's all right, but it means more resources for, um, for our red friend down here. Also, look, they've got overwhelming fleet power, so that's really worrying. I think I'm going to try to do something about that. So guys, got a bit of a problem now. The um, I'm actually using Rautech because they're uh, they have a tropical preference. I'm I'm kind of using them to colonize, but the problem is I don't really want them as uh, slaves. So I'm going to stick them as residents. Uh, there's only six of them. But there's going to be a lot more of them pretty soon, and. Again, I don't know why, but I can use academic privilege, which is kind of amazing. Um, if you don't know, um, well, I suppose academic privilege will just give um, a happiness boost to the rulers and specialists. So I suppose that's pretty good, but I don't know. Decent conditions is fine for now, I guess. Don't exactly have loads of consumer goods. Okay, I'm just going to leave that then. Again, um, I can unlock more advanced um, droids and robots. Um, I think droids are fine, but I kind of run the risk of um, them revolting. So I'm going to ban artificial intelligence. Let's just do that now, I guess. Um, edicts, no. Policies. Um, robot workers allowed. I don't have the option yet.
So guys, I might go for Supremacist because that's going to give me a, uh, well, more of my diplomatic power will come from my fleet. Um, it'll give me um, more naval capacity and my claim influence is going to be reduced by 10%. So might as well, I guess. Rapid deployment. Um, defense in depth is good because that's going to give me a defensive bonus hit and run. Um, emergency faster than light damage risk is reduced by 25%. And yeah, rapid deployments probably the best with sub light speed and ship range bonuses. Um, there's something else I really need here. I've changed economy to mixed economy because that's going to give me more consumer goods, which Again, I can sort of pass on to my population. Um, so excellent. Look at this, public works. This is um, one I've been trying to get, okay. City districts provide one additional housing. So that's pretty huge, guys. Oh, crumbs. So there's the birth of a galactic community, um, which I suppose I should join, really. Ugh. It's also a massive space dragon thing. Um, God. You know, I hate these notifications. I wish you could... Um, Put on a mode where there's going to be fewer notifications because it's just ridiculous. Look at all of these. Gather the specimens. Yep. Join the community. Whatever. Okay. That's three more. Okay. Um. Wow. So now you've um join the galactic community and we can see a lot more of the well sort of enemies i suppose um i'm curious about their relative power though okay their fleet power is better but their economic power is worse so that's kind of a good sign uh let's have a look at these guys again it looks like my economy is great then which i'm kind of happy about uh i need to get more fleet power So guys, I'm building um, deep space black sites, and if you look at them, uh, it requires a known planet. So if you have um, at least one planet in the sector, you can build a, a deep space black site, and these do various things. So um, they produce unity, which is good, uh, increase uh, ruler skill, uh, government ethics attraction increased by 25%, and stability increased by 5 Now. Bear in mind that low stability can mean slave revolts and things. Uh, deep space black sites are actually quite um, useful. So, yeah. If you can get them, then absolutely, you know, do get them. Oh, but yeah, off world trading companies are obviously more useful.
Hey guys. So as you guys can see, I've got to the um, third ascension point and typically you would go down the engineered evolution, the flesh is weak or maybe a psychic group. Um, but I think I'm going to do something very odd because I've got um, a very small naval capacity um, and I've also got um, a large amount of alloys coming in. I'm very tempted to go for galactic force projection, which would increase the naval capacity and the fleet command limit um, pretty significantly. Uh, it's a really tough decision, if I'm honest. The thing is, I don't know whether I should go down the Flesh is Weak route. Well, obviously this um, sets you down the path of becoming cyborgs and then becoming um, androids. And if you take the Flesh is Weak, it also means that robots can't rebel anymore. Engineered ev evolution is quite fun too. Uh, I suppose because I've set out to be like a slaver type empire. Engineered evolution will be good because there's all kinds of interesting perks like uh, nerve stapling and stuff that you can do later on. Um, so I suppose I'm probably going to go down the engineered evolution um, route just to uh, kind of stay on what I'm doing. And I'm just going to ban AI, which should hopefully stop any kind of rebellion from the machines. So yeah, galactic force projection this time, I think. Excellent. And... As you guys can see, my naval capacity is huge now, which is very nice. Um, so, I guess I'm just going to carry on for a bit. Alright guys, um, it's going to be the big one, so I don't expect to destroy the enemy entirely, but I'm going to give it a bit of a go. Um, if not, I suppose just uh, weakening the enemy is always good. So, I make claims and then I'm going to declare war. Which is good. As you guys can see, I'm pretty much outclassing him everywhere. So I'm going to go down the list. He's going to attack here. So this is about 1,500 fleet. Oh no, no, the space station's 1,500, so about 2,000 versus 4,000. Again, we're going to go and um, attack these guys. Now, normally, you don't divide your fleet unless you um, are vastly superior. So again, this is a bit dodgy, right? I've got 3,000 here, and the enemy's got 1,100. But they've got very good defenses, so let's look at the defense here. 6,000 defense is monstrous. But uh, I think I'm going to leave these guys in defense. Uh, we're going over there. The rest of them we really have to worry about. Like I say, I'm going to be trying to take out the enemy home worlds. I'm going to have to keep an eye on my energy. If we're going to depth, that means the uh, power of my fleet will half, which seems like a ridiculous penalty, but never mind. Never assign my ally. I'm not really doing um, much diplomacy this this uh, ba this game, I guess. Let's have a look how it goes, then. Also got my scientists on standby. Okay, 
Okay, so the enemy's attacking as expected and we are repelling him successfully. I'll tell you what, I'm going to go here, then here, because I'm guessing the enemy's going to attack me here. Oh, no. I'll tell you what, I am going to... Get my transport ships in, then I'm going to go and... Um, Try to attack the enemy base. Hmm. Again, defense is very good. Okay, um, I'm holding shift and I'm clicking one at a time. Because that means that um, the ships won't divide as much. So again, this is going pretty well. Excellent, let's have a little look at my scientists then. Yep. Go and do some research, I guess. Oh. Ah, here we go. So again, we're going to go um, steal the enemy's technology. It's always very nice. By the way, guys, if you've got more, whatever they're called, webways or whatever, I know they're not called webways. Um, one of the nice things is the enemy will kind of try to go crazy defending what it can't defend. That's why I generally speaking try to defend planets. Ooh. Again, I can't defeat this enemy. But I can do a bit of defense, I guess. Hmm. Okay, right. I should have noticed. My energy was low. No, I can defeat the enemy. the army looking 200 and something or mine's 400 I think I'm going to send my uh, ships back to retake this area not that it really matters but it's a real pain in the butt if these vanish once I've destroyed the enemy Crystal resources, that's always good. Again, I don't know why I'm getting rebellions here.
So it would appear I've actually won. will settle status quo then. Ah, they've been destroyed. Very nice, and I've got a huge amount of territory to take now. And a bit of debt. Also, a bit of a problem with the enemy here, because they are all undesirables. So they have to be exterminated if there's nothing else I can do, unfortunately. But what I can do is hmm. and some of my guys. So the planets don't vanish. Okay, that seems pretty adequate. And in here, Let's see if we can get some more pops down. Stick someone in charge. Oops, that was a bit of a mistake, anyway. That's all good. Download down grade B slightly. So, guys, as you can see, I've got a massive area to expand into, which would kind of put me as, um, one of my most powerful empires. Also, because of my huge number of ships and whatnot, I think I'm going to be superior to basically every other species. Oh, almost. Although I've got to get more research, obviously. But I tell you what, guys, I've really enjoyed this game, and obviously my resources are really bad right now, but as the population's exterminated, that should rectify itself. I, I also should probably delete um, some of my uh, star bases. But anyway, I'm going to leave it there for now. Uh, let me know in the comments if you want to see part two. And I've really enjoyed this game, and I hope it's given you a few ideas. So thank you very much, guys.